We're back, back, back again with another Procreate video. Today, we're gonna look at my top tips and my most favorite things that I've learned how to do in Procreate. Let's jump in. The first trick I wanna show you is stabilization. So I am really, really, really bad at keeping my hands straight and drawing like a straight line. I just can't do it. So if I go, I'll just show you, if I go into something like technical pen and I'm gonna try and draw a straight line, you see, see how bad that is? See like how many bumps along the way. So what I can do, I can click on my brush library and then just click on the brush again and that will open the brush studio. Now there's so much that you can do inside of brush studio and I'm going to show you one or two tricks on here but to start off I'm going to go into stabilization. Then you see the amount of streamline is set to zero right now. Just to show you I'm going to draw a straight line here. Not good right but I'm going to make that 100 and then draw a straight line again. You see already that's better. I can also add stabilization, which is what we're here for. Just look at even, even on here, I hope you can see it. Look, if I bring that higher, you see how those lines just straighten themselves up, yeah? So if I click on done and go back onto my canvas, now if I draw, oh, look at that clean line, yeah? Now, good things and bad things about stabilization. So I'm gonna show you this using mono line, which is, as you know, my favorite brush. It's in calligraphy. Uh, three fingers down and shake to clear. Now, my stabilization right now is probably set, I've got streamline set to 13 and stabilization set to 50. So that means I can just, you know, do something really nice and straight like this. But it also means that this doesn't really work, yeah? So if you wanna be able to do that action, I'm gonna just take the, stream, the stabilization off and then I can do this kind of thing. So it really depends what you're trying to achieve. Three fingers down, scrub. So I wanna show you one more super cool thing you can do in the brush library. I'm gonna duplicate mono line, so I'm just gonna swipe to the left and then duplicate. Now I'm gonna tap on here and I'm gonna go into color dynamics. I'm gonna go down to color pressure and I'm going to change the hue to about 50. And that now means that the hue of the color that I'm drawing is gonna change according to the pressure I use. So now because we're on black, we're not gonna see anything, but if I choose a nice kind of purple color and I start drawing, so I'm going really lightly, it's pink, and then I go stronger, oh my God, suddenly it's green. So you see, it kind of really is affected by how strong, how lightly I press. So you see now it's even turned into kind of this color. And the color you start off with really matters. So if I start off with, let's say a yellow, and then I start really lightly, press down more, it goes blue. Yeah, and it's so, so cool. I really like using this with brushes that are more for like scripting brushes. If we go and take the script brush, for example, which the script brush is kind of a diagonal brush. It's really affected by the pressure. And if we duplicate it and do the same thing again, but this time in the color dynamics, I'm only gonna go a little bit. So let's say to something like 15. Then by the way, in the drawing pad over here where you can test it out, you can select a different color. So it just helps you to see how it's going to react. Yeah, great. So we didn't choose a big hue like before. So now it's gonna be really subtle. And you can see that with script brushes, it really makes a big difference. I'm pressing more when I'm going down and pressing less when I'm going up. And it can create almost like this ribbon pattern. Yeah, if I do it really exaggerated, you can see it just gives a slight change in the hue and it's really cool. Now, the next thing I wanna show you is you can snap into shapes. So I'm gonna go with my trusty monoline again. I'm gonna go into calligraphy and go with monoline. Now I'm gonna try and draw a circle and I'm very bad at that as well. And that's not good, right? Tap with two fingers to undo. If I want to draw a perfect circle or an ellipse, what I'll do is I'll draw it and then I'll keep holding my pen down at the end. You see, it says ellipse created. Now, if I move in and out, it's gonna make it bigger or smaller. And if I let go, I have this little drop down and I can say, is it an ellipse, is it a circle? And I also get some points. So I can make this point a bit bigger, this point a bit smaller. Yeah, I can kind of play around with it as I wish. And if I select anywhere outside of the shape, I can move it around as well on my canvas. So yeah, so now I can draw a few more shapes. Let's say I wanna draw this like quadrilateral probably said that wrong and you see it's giving me loads of options like saying is it this is it that like what is this okay it's even letting me do an open kind of shape I'm going to change it to rectangle um let's do a triangle over here maybe I can do like a little star I'm really bad at drawing stars um <laughs> it's so bad there we go 
Okay, so now that we have a few shapes, I wanna move on to my next trick, which is multi-color dropping. So we saw color dropping in the previous video, which is when I wanna fill a certain closed space, I can just drag the color from there and then just drop it in. Now you see I've got the option here to continue filling. When I have that selected, this little check mark is here and it basically means that I don't need to drag to fill my next shape. I can just tap, tap, tap. So while you have that continuous color dropping, you just need to tap and you don't have to redrag, which is incredible. So the next thing I want to show you is alpha lock. And I think alpha lock is just so incredible. So what I'm going to do is draw two circles or two just overlapping shapes just to show you. I'm going to do one circle here. I chose a brush that has just some stuff on it so it's not monoline again. And then I'll do another one on top. Let's use this color. Let's say I wanted to add something on top of that top layer. So let's say I wanted to add a bit of shading. Okay, so I'm going to go to my airbrush and go with soft brush and then select just a darker version of this color. So I'll go into value and then lower the brightness. Let's say I wanted to add a bit of shading on here. So I can try my best to stay in the lines and not affect the blue one, but that's never going to happen. So what we have is a way of locking this layer so anything I draw on it only remains on whatever is already drawn. So if I tap on my layer and click on alpha lock, you see that now it has sort of a transparent background around it. So it's recognizing what's already on the layer and it's locking me from drawing anywhere else. So if I use my pen over here, you see nothing is happening. But if I use my pen here, it's happening. So that means I can just shade like that. It's probably too big smaller yeah I could just use the shading like that and create something really cool now let's do this on the bottom one as well so I'm gonna click on my blue layer and then to use alpha lock I can tap on it and go into alpha lock or I can swipe with two fingers to the right and then you see that it's kind of started alpha lock I'm gonna color drop this color so holding down to get that color into my color selector and lower the opacity and I'll just create a bit of shading here yeah, obviously this shading doesn't really make sense, but <laughs> it's just for the purpose of the demonstration. Now, alpha lock is incredible, as we said, but it has a downside because now I'm drawing on this layer. What if I want my shadings or my highlights to be on a separate layer, but still only be visible on what I have on the layer? So for that, I can use a clipping mask. So let's do the same thing on the purple. I'm color dropping to get it and then going in a bit lighter. Um, I the saturation down a bit and then go here yeah so that's a good color for me so what I can do is I can do another layer and that's going to be my highlight layer and if I tap on it and select clipping mask now you see it's got that little arrow and it's telling me you will only see me when I'm on top of this layer so again I'm going to try and draw here nothing's happening if I draw here something is happening so it's almost like an alpha lock for a different layer. The only difference is, you see that over here? I know I didn't see it when I drew over here, but I did actually draw that. Yeah, so the layer does exist. If I unclip it, it is there, but when I'm using a clipping mask, it kind of masks itself onto the layer beneath it. So it's similar to a mask you might've used before, but because I can only see it this way, I still think that it's useful. Another trick I want to show you is in the brush studio again. So let's say I want to add some glitter. I'll go into luminous and select my glimmer brush. Let's just add another layer on top. No clipping mask, no alpha lock, nothing. I just draw on it. See, it's added those stars in and obviously there's more stars, but it's just a white background. So I'll change it. I've drawn all of these sparkles, but it's way too much. So what I can do, I'm just going to clear this layer. So three fingers down and scrub. I'll go back into my brush library and select this brush and tap on it. I can go into stroke path and I can change the spacing and the jitter. So if I you see that the spacing now, it just kind of makes it so, so, so tight together, but I'm gonna bring the spacing up and you can see that already it's making it just kind of spread out a bit more. Can you also notice that there's a bit of a color change? I think there's some color dynamics going on, yeah. So you can see it's giving a bit of a different hue. Um, which I can take down if I want, or I can make it more intense if I want. But I'm kind of happy with that now. And now when I paint over it, oh, lovely, I'm going to make that a bit bigger. You see that it gives me a nicer distribution of all of them. 
Now, another trick I want to show you is the drawing guides. So if I click on my tool over here to go into my actions menu, I have a drawing guide. I can turn it on and then I'll get these squares. So now that I have these squares, they're not going to really do anything apart from just have squares. So that could even be good if you just want to kind of follow a pattern. But if I tap on my layer and select drawing assist, what it will do is it will turn on whatever assisting kind of canvas I have. So now if I'm drawing a straight line, you see how it's snapped to this, right? So if I draw, it's kind of snapping me to the guide. So even if I'm drawing a bit on the side of it, it will kind of snap me to wherever it needs to go. And like you saw how I'm, I'm going diagonally, but it's almost not really letting me. It's, it's kind of a weird interaction, but sometimes that's what you need. Let's look at a few others, three fingers down and scrub to clear my canvas. I'm going to click into here and edit drawing guide. Now you've got the 2D guide, which is what we had now. And by the way, on any one of these guides, you'll have a, some colors here at the top. So you can choose what color your guide is. You can rotate it using the green dot or you can move it using the blue. Then I've got isometric drawing, which allows me to sort of draw in almost like a 3D space, which could be really cool. Then you've got the perspective one um, and you've got symmetry. Now symmetry is the most fun by far. Within symmetry, you have a few different options. You've got vertical, horizontal, quadrant and radial. Uh, let me show you vertical for a second. So the line is here in the middle and that means that when I start drawing, anything that I draw on this side will automatically go to the other side. And if I cross over, it will cross over as well. Now in my options with those little blue and green lines, I can change it around. So you might want it to be on the diagonal or you might want it to be kind of here rather than in the center. If I click on my options and I choose radial, which is everyone's favorite, I'll click done. I'm just gonna clear this layer. Now it's gonna do my drawing in eight different sections. You've got two options within the symmetry radial. So if I tap on here again into edit and options, you see you have rational symmetry. So right now what's happening is if I draw something and it's going from, let's say, the kind of diagonal side to the straight side. So you see it's going to do that on all of them, right? So I'll just draw an arrow to show you. They're all going from diagonal side to straight side. I'm going to keep that on there. I'm going to go to edit drawing guide and I'm going to change it to rational symmetry. What's gonna happen now is, I'll just change color to green. I'm drawing from diagonal to straight. Okay, see what happens now? It's taking the spot on this triangle and using that same spot on all of them to start my drawing. So that's the difference between the rational symmetry and not with rational symmetry. And there is no right or wrong, it's just whatever you fancy at that moment. And I think this is the most fun. I find myself a lot just kind of like doodling in this space. And that was that. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. Please share in the comments below what your favorite tricks are to do in Procreate and let me know if you have any questions. I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe. See you at the next one.